joining me. Grey Board Gamer here with another series of playthrough videos. This time I'm playing BIOS Genesis by Phil Eklund and Sierra Madre Games. Let's crack this box open and get it set up. The game's set up and ready to go. Normally I do a setup video, but I'm just going to dive right into the gameplay and explain the components and all the symbols on the cards throughout the gameplay in much greater detail. But before we dive into the gameplay, just a quick breakdown of what you're seeing here. We have the player's cards, which is my two colors, red and green, which I selected at random, and that's what's called for for the solitaire game. Over here, the blue and yellow player are going to be AI parasitic players. This row, or this column you see here, is actually four separate rows of refugia. Those are where the game, a lot of it's going to take place. We have the cosmic ocean, coastal, and continent. And I'll zoom in on these cards and give you a much better breakdown of what all these symbols mean on them. Next to each row are the mutation decks. There's five in each deck to start. Again, these were all shuffled and chosen randomly. Down here at the bottom you'll see the event deck and here is the uh, community deck for the macroorganisms and that would come later in the game if we're able to uh, even attain enough resources to change from a microorganism to a macroorganism. But when we get to each of these items as I go through the different phases I will go into depth and do the best job that I can at not only explaining them but making as few mistakes as possible. I don't think I can get through an entire game without making any mistakes. Let me show you the 52 page small print rule book here. There's a lot of information to go through. A lot to learn, a lot to keep up with. So if I make mistakes, I'm okay with that. As long as we're learning from it and it makes you interested in the game and you want to go pick up a copy and play it, I've done what I've set out to do. Anything you see, any questions you have, please leave in the comments. Tell me if I did something wrong or for something you liked. Please let me know that too. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. At the start of our first round, the first thing we're going to do is draw our first event from the event deck. And you can see right now we're in the Hadean era, which is the part of time when the solar system was still forming. Comets were whizzing around, bombarding planets, seeding them with elements. Also, it's when the Earth's crust was starting to form. Let's see what we get first. We have the T Tari Early Sun. The T Tari Early Sun. The first thing we're going to look at is this row on the left here, this column that shows the four different landforms. You can notice that three are grayed out and only one is not. The one that is not is going to be the one that is active during this round. And that one is the ocean. So we go to the ocean landform, which they have these inactive cards on them. We turn it over to show that the ocean is going to be active. Put that face up. That'll be our only active refugia. Next, we're going to look at these icons right here. And this very first one, and they have different flavor text under them. This one is an x-ray surge, but the symbol we're looking at here is a smite event. Now the smite event would affect any refugium that are out. And it's going to happen again. And what happens is, for each of these smite symbols, it's going to blast a mana 
off of the refugium unless it's one of the three special ones that are protected against these smite events. But since we don't have any out right now, that smite event will not affect anything. Next, you'll see this symbol that looks like a, a globe, represents the planet Earth, with a comet coming down from above smashing into it. What that means is, one, since there's only one of those symbols, is going to activate on one of the refugia. And since the comet's coming from above, you're going to start at the top, and when you come to the first active refugia, you will take the first card available and place it out, and it is now in play. There's a lot going on on these cards. First thing that's going to happen is when it comes out, you see this mana structure down here. I'm going to place those cubes down here in the disorganized mana area. So there's going to be one green, one blue, and a yellow. The red circle is for another determination that you don't need to worry about when you're putting out your, your mana. Next you'll see the enzyme slots. Whenever you place enzymes on this card, you start by placing furthest to the left and working your way over. And you see on these enzyme slots there's different symbols. You have a cube with an arrow and then a C with a plus. What that cube with an arrow means is if you roll that number and it has this symbol on it, if there's any mana up here in the organized area, for each one of these that you roll, it's going to take one of those cubes and move it back down to disorganized. And that'll make more sense when you see that happen in the gameplay. Also, the C plus means you're going to get a catalyst, because when one of those cubes moves down, biosynthesis occurs, creates a catalyst that'll go to a player. And then you also see this symbol, which means enzyme death. So if there was an enzyme on here, and you rolled a six, not only would it move one of the organized mana to disorganized, but it would also take off the first or the rightmost enzyme. So if you had three enzymes on here, and you rolled a six, that means this one right here would come off. Or if you rolled two sixes, then two would come off, and so on. Then you have the name of the location, the green rust fumarole. And you can see that it is an ocean refugium. Then you have flavor text on each card. Next, you see the symbols. This represents a warming era, and this is a cooling area, global warming, global cooling. And depending on which era we're in, if we're in a warming area, and you roll a 1, 2, or a 3, that would take disorganized mana and bring it up to the organized. And in a cooling period, only a 1 and a 2 do that. And then also you'll see on every card has this symbol, which means if you roll doubles or two dice that are equal, then you have the option to turn this card into an organism, which means we would turn it over and it would become an organism. And you would transfer anything that's up in this organized mana area onto the back of the card. And we'll show you that in detail when, when it happens. Our green rust fumarole is out. And when it comes out, we put one of each of the cubes in the disorganized mana area. Next, on our event card, you see we have a UV surge, and again, it's different flavor text depending on what's happening on the card. And the UV surge, or this is an extremophile event, if we had an organism out, then that event would cause what's called an atrophy, one atrophy for each symbol that the organism was not protected from. And you'll see on the cards, sometimes there'll be multiples of these. So there may be two, three of these extremophile events. 
I want to pick up this card real quick just to show you some organisms are protected. You can see they have these two shields, which means if, this, if an organism had this mutation on it, it would be protected from two of those extremophile events. Okay, I did grab that from the right pile. Also, when this comes out, I almost forgot, whenever a landform is activated, you are to royal, which means take the mutation deck next to it. Take the top card, place it on the bottom. So we don't have an organism out that's going to be affected by the extremophile event. Next we have a UV event and it says zero on it. And what that would mean is if we had an organism out and it had mutations on it and it was not able to protect itself, then that means the organisms out could have zero mutations on them. Sometimes there's different numbers in here, one, two, or three, depending on what's going on on the card. And then finally, we have the Great Flare, which shows that we are in a warming period, which is the same thing that I showed you on the Refugium card. So we're in a warming period, so ones, twos, and threes will organize and disorganize mana for us. And finally, we'll see the player turn order. Red player will go first, and then play goes in a clockwise fashion around the game board. And I'll place little marker there so I know that the red is going first and then it'll go clockwise red to green yellow to blue and then each turn we'll have to refer to this to see which player is going to be the first player. That'll take care of our event phase. Now we move into the assignment phase starting with our red player. Now during the assignment phase the player can assign a few different things, but for now, since he doesn't have any organisms out, he's going to take one of his little dome-shaped tokens, which is a biont, and move it to an active landform. Right now the only one available is in the ocean, and that's the green rust fumarole. So for reds, assignment. It's going to go here into the organized mana of the green rust fumarole. The red could also take its enzyme if it wanted to and assign it onto the leftmost enzyme slot. And what that would do is it would cover up the four which would mean if we rolled a 4 during the auto autocatalytic roll that's coming up, if we rolled a 4, it would be protected because that enzyme is covering up the 4 spot. And likewise, the green could put its on the 5, and then only 6s would cause us any problems. But again, if we roll a 6 and enzyme death has occurred, then that would go away. I don't think I'm going to use that right now. So I'm only going to assign Red's Biont to the Green Rust Fumarole. After Red, Green would go. Green's next in the turn order. There's only one place for it to go, and that's also the Green Rust Fumarole. And it's also going to place its Biont on this location. And now when there's two biomes in a location, it's a contested refugium. And whichever player has the most enzymes and organized mana in their color would be considered the progenote. And that would be the person who would make the rolls for this particular location when we do the auto catalytic roll coming up. Now when it's tied, you come down here to the mana structure and you start at the left 
and the first one that comes up that's a player's color, in this case green means green, is going to be in charge and is going to be our progenote for the green rust fumarole. Even though the players start with three bionts, at this point in the game they can only assign one. Now you can assign multiples later on, like when you get an organism, and this is a card that's not in play during this playthrough. You can see on here the green section is entropy chromosomes and then it says plus one maximum bionts on refugia. So what that means is which organ, whichever organism you control, say it was a red player, whichever organism they control that has the greenest or the most green, then that would be their entropy. So if they had two chromosomes in here, it would give them plus two and their one initial one they get, which means they would be able to place all three of their bionts out during the assignment phase. But since they have no organisms out, there's no way for them to have extra entropy right now, extra entropy chromosomes that would allow them to place more than one biont out. After these two players go, it'll come around here to yellow. Yellow and blue are both our AI uh, parasitic players. And in order for them to activate, we would have to have an organism out, and that organism would also have to have some kind of mutation attached to it because these parasites can only steal cubes from mutations. So since we don't have an organism out with a mutation on it that they could steal from, we're just going to skip over their turn for right now. And then I'll explain that again better whenever we do have an organism out with mutation cubes on it that they can steal. Then I'll go into more detail into what they do. Our assignment phase is complete, and now we're going to go into our next phase, which is the autocatalytic roll. And that occurs for every refugium that has bionts active on it. Right now, there's only one out and only one with any on it, but if you had multiples out, you start at the top from left to right, any roll for each one that you come to that has those bionts in the organized mana. Same thing, work your way all the way down. But for now, we have our one, and the number of dice you roll depends on how many things and what they are in this organized mana area at the top. Right now we have two bionts on there. You roll two dice for each bionts that is in the organized area and you roll one additional die for each cube. Right now we have no organized mana cubes up there. We have two bionts, so we're going to roll four dice. Now we want to get ones, twos, and threes, and we want to stay away from fours, fives, and sixes right now. Well, we did not do that, and this is going to cause us some problems. We have a three, and since we're in the warming phase, that's going to allow us to organize a cube. But fours and sixes disorganize mana, and we don't have any enzymes on there, so we're going to send one up, and then we're going to pull three down. Again, this is a contested refugium, because there's more than one biont in it, and green is our progenote, or the person in charge that would be making all the decisions. So we had this three that we rolled, which is going to allow us, because we're currently in a warming period, that's going to allow us to organize one of the mana. And what I'm going to choose is green, but we have two sixes and a four. The four and the sixes cause mana death, starting with the cubes and then moving on to the bionts. And we're going to have to get all three of them off of there. So the cube will come down, and as it comes down though, 
It causes biosynthesis and a creation of one of these green enzyme markers. Now, if it was only green here by himself, then this would be his. But in the rules, if it's a contested refugium, the progenotes making the decisions, but the enzymes that are gained from those decisions will go to another player. But since there's only one other player, in this case, this green enzyme is going to go to the red player's tableau, or section where he keeps his tokens. Also, both of them are going to be taken off because the four pulled down the cube, and then we had two sixes left, so both of them are going to come off, and they're each going to receive an enzyme in their color to their own tableau. Remember, we had a green enzyme created from biosynthesis when the green mana cube was disorganized. And since green was the progenote and it was a contested refugium, this green enzyme will go to the red player. And then each player had their biont removed because of the mana death roll, which means they will each get an enzyme in their own color in compensation for having their biont taken off. We have no more refugia refugium that have an autocatalytic role that's needed. Next we would move into the Darwin phase and do a Darwin role, but that would be for every organism that's in play and there are no organisms in play right now. And then finally we get into the purchase phase where the players can purchase one thing for each biont they have in an organism. So if there was an organism out and it had a green player's biont in it, then the green player could purchase something for this organism, even if it wasn't in his tableau, if it was up here as part of the red player. As long as they have one of their biont's in it, they can purchase something for it. Again, that's something that will come up in future turns, but right now we have no organisms out. Even the parasites can purchase items too. And I'll go into detail with that when it happens. And that would be the end of this round. We're just getting started, but we're ready to draw an event card and roll into our second round. We're ready to start our next next turn or round and we're still in the Hadean era and we'll draw our next event card and it's the Mars Paleo Ocean and you can see this time we're going to have two active landforms. So the cosmic landform will also be active along with the ocean landform. And this time we got two symbols coming down from above, so we're going to bring two cards into play starting from the top because they're coming down from above and not erupting from the earth. We start at the top from the active cosmic landform and it only has two under it, so they will both come into play. And what we have is the Deep Hot Biosphere, and it is shielded. So when we saw that Smite event, which is this symbol on the earlier card, if it would have come out on a future card, this Refugium is protected from smite events. It's one of the special cards and it comes out with a green, a blue, and two red disorganized mana. And it's fairly stable because only fives and sixes causes problems and you can use just one enzyme to cover up that five and then you only have to worry about sixes. But whether it's warm or cool, only ones and twos are going to help you out. Now we see this symbol up here and this means this is a special one that 
to place your little domed marker, your biont on here, you have to sacrifice one of your enzymes just to place your biont in the organized area. And then our second refugium that came out was interplanetary dust, which again is also protected from smite events. And this one can create a lot, but it's also very unstable. All the way down to three will cause mana to become disorganized. And it only comes out with two yellow and a green. These are now active. And they're in an active row. So all three of these are fair game right now to put our biont on during the assignment phase. Let me draw and place the mana cubes in the disorganized area for each card. Our disorganized mana is in place. Next, we don't have any more actions to take, but we can see that we're in a cooling period this time. And our first player is going to be our red player again, so I'll leave the token right where it's at. Now, we were in a warming period, now we're in a cooling period. And these symbols come into play if you keep getting cooling periods or you keep getting warming periods. If you get four of either one of them in a row consecutively, it sends the game into Armageddon. And hopefully we won't have to see how that works, but we'll see what happens when we get there. But for now, this is our first cooling event right after a warming event. So right now, we don't have to worry about that. And we're in the cooling stage. Global cooling. Also, a quick note, we're in our second turn here. Each of these turns takes place over a 200 million year time span. So we're talking about, right now, we're in the Hadean area when the Earth's crust is forming, comets are bombarding it, elements are coming into play, things are starting to mix around and life's starting to form. We're just in the early stages of life formation. First we're going to start with our red player for our assignment phase. And I have to decide where I want to go. I don't want to use up my enzymes right now, so I'm going to stay away from the deep hot biosphere because I have to use an enzyme just to be on that one. We're in a cooling phase, which makes the interplanetary dust quite an attractive location because one, two, three, and four all organize mana. But again, three, four, five, and six all cause negative effects to happen, which means we'll probably get kicked off of there unless we want to spend some enzymes to keep that from happening. I think I'm going to go for it anyway. Red is going to give you the first to assign, and I'm going to go to the interplanetary dust refugium. And I'm going to spend one enzyme and place it on the three, so threes won't cause us any problems. Next player is green, who is also going to go there to give us the best shot of success, and also spend one enzyme. Now that blocked out mana death on four. Fours would still cause enzyme death, but it won't cause the mana to disorganize. Right now the only thing that's going to do that is fives and sixes. Now again we're in a contested refugium, and it's tied because there's one of each enzyme on there. Then we look down here at the mana structure, and it's yellow, yellow, green comes first. So green will be the progenote for the interplanetary dust refugium. And yellow and blue both cannot assign themselves anywhere because there's no organisms out for them to attach to. And that'll take us into our autocatalytic role. Before we make the roll, I just wanted to zoom in and just as a reminder, we have two biont 
So that's going to mean we're going to have to roll four dice again. We have our enzymes placed on these first two slots, which means four will cause enzyme death, five and sixes will cause mana death and enzyme death. We're into our autocatalytic roll. Again, we're rolling four dice. And we're, we want ones, twos, and threes. Fours will help us, but it'll also cause our enzymes to die, but we definitely want to avoid fives and sixes. And we did not do very well. We got a three and a four, and then two fives. So that's going to cause problems. We're not going to be able to form an organism again this round. Darn it. Also remember green was our progenote, so green is making decisions here. So any enzymes that are gained from mana death are going to go to the red player this time because it's a contested refugium. Now we did roll a three and a four, and that's going to organize mana for us. So we will organize a green and a yellow because the three and the four and we're in a cooling phase. Now the four is also going to cause enzyme death which means the left rightmost enzyme, this green, will come off and go back into the bowl or the soup and then the two fives are going to cause the disorganization of mana. So our green and our yellow will move back down, biosynthesizing and creating one each of the enzymes that will go to the red player this turn. And one of these fives, well both of them, but there's only one enzyme left. So that enzyme is also blasted off and gone now. Our red player is going to receive the yellow and the green enzyme into their tableau because of the enzyme death and green was in charge as the progenote. Again, we don't have any organisms that are out, so this turn is also going to go by quick. That's another quick 200 million years that is zipped by. We would have a purchase phase to go through, but we have no organisms again which will roll us into our next set of 200 million years, round three. We begin our next round. We're still in the Hadean era. And our next event, this time, it's bolide water delivery. So all our comets are flying and smashing into the earth, bringing water and other elements to the planet. And this time, only the ocean is going to be active. So the cosmic landform is no longer active, trapping our two bionts over here in the interplanetary dust, which means we can't move them off of there. They're still going to get an autocatalytic roll and something might happen for them, but we can't reassign them right now because they're stuck on an inactive landform. Again, we're coming from above, but there's only one landform available. So we'll have two cards drawn. There's only one left in that landform. So we'll move this over. And that one will now be out. And that is our hydrothermal vent also protected from smite although they only organize mana on a roll of one and then disorganize it or destroy enzymes on a roll of six but it starts with five mana so this might be a good one to go to the only problem is you have to hope for ones but you could use two enzymes to cover up these and then you don't have to worry about ever having 
mana death, or enzyme loss. But again, you still have to roll ones each time in order for it to produce organized mana. I'll get the mana cubes out. Next on our bolide water delivery, we have an extremophile event. We don't have any we don't have any organisms in play, so we don't have to worry about that. And then I'll bring up these other cards to show you. This is our second cooling period in a row. So if we get two more in a row before we have another warming event, then we're going to be in uh, a frozen wasteland in Armageddon. And our first player this time is going to be Blue. Blue is our AI player over here, and they would go first for the assignment, but there's nothing to assign to because there's no organisms out, and that'll bring us over here to red. Normally, we would take time to figure out what red's going to do, but red is currently trapped on the interplanetary dust and doesn't have any organisms with additional green chromosomes or entropy chromosomes in them, so he can still only assign one. Same with our green, also stuck on interplanetary dust. Comes around to yellow, no organisms out, which means it is also stuck. I may be trapped there, but I do want to put some enzymes down which I can do, because even though it's not an active row, I do have Bionce on there. The Refugium is still chemically active and I can still place enzymes on it. I'll have red place... I'm going to keep the green uh, yellow enzyme on there. And our green player is not going to use any of their enzymes. That'll take us into our autocatalytic roll. And again, we want ones, twos, and threes. Fours will organize mana, but it will kill our enzymes. And five and six again will do both. We still have our two bionts there, so we're going to roll four dice. Would really like some ones, twos, and threes. Here we go. Ugh, we got ones and twos and fours. Fours also organize. Okay, we're gonna get some get some results here. So we got one, two, and two fours. All four of these organize mana. So all three of our mana is gonna come up to the organized field. Now none of these cause mana death. So they're all going to stay up there. But the fours will cause enzyme death. And there's two of them, so they'll both come off of the card. and Go back into the soup. But we rolled doubles. And remember, if you roll doubles, you can flip the card over into an organism. And we're going to do that because we managed to organize all the mana, keep it up there, and now we can flip this card over. We'll do that right now. All of these are going to stay with the organism because they were in the organized field. So now we have photocarboxylation. I hope I said that right. And all of these items, including the biomes, will go on to the organism as chromosomes. So now we can see our organism taking shape. We have two yellow, which are specificity chromosomes, which during the Darwin roll will allow us to re-roll dice. We have two green or entropy chromosomes. Again, that's going to allow additional bionts to refug refugia. So, the player that gets this into their tableau will now be able to assign all three of their bionts out, 
and we have one metabolism chromosome which is going to give us a shield, a heat shield from those extremophile events that happen on our event cards. We don't have any heredity chromosomes that protect us from the fives and sixes during the Darwin roll that cause atrophy. So our first action when we purchase is we're going to try and purchase some blue, something, some blue mutation that gives us some heredity, heredity protection. This organism, the photocarboxylation, is going to belong to the green player. When that card was turned over previously, it had a green and a yellow enzyme on it and they were tied up top with one each biont, so it had the green enzyme, which means green was the progenote, so when it flipped over it became green's organism. Also, in the second and third round of the Hadean era, I did not royal the decks. The inactive cosmic, uh, the cosmic landform and the ocean landform were active in the second round, and then just the ocean is active this round. So I roiled both of these decks one more time for the second round and then another time for this third round. So now these are all correct. We didn't have any time where anything was going to be purchased so it didn't affect what's going to happen in the game. But it's all caught up and it's all correct currently. Next we're done with the autocatalytic rolls. There's no more bionce on any of the other refugium. Now we're going to move into our Darwin roll and we do have one organism here, photocarboxylation, that is out. And this organism is going to have to go up against the Darwin roll. And that means, same as before, for each biont that is in the organism, two dice and one additional die for each cube. So two, four, five, six, seven. So seven total dice for the Dar Darwin roll. Now for each one that we get, we're going to get a green green catalyst that's going to go to the green player because this is his organism because we have one red biont in there as a chromosome. So for each one we will get a green catalyst and if we roll three of something, if we get triples, we'll get an additional green catalyst for each set of triples that we roll. We can re-roll two dice because we have two specificity chromosomes and we might need to do that because we don't have anything in the blue heredity chromosomes that are going to protect us from fives and sixes. And for every five and six we roll, it's going to cause an atrophy. And if we have to do that, I'll get into more detail at that time. But for now, we have to roll seven dice. This is our first Darwin roll for an organism. We got seven dice. We want ones, triples, but we want to stay away from fives and sixes. Well, we did pretty good. We got a one and we got triple threes. So for that one, we were going to get a green catalyst. And for those triples, we'll get a second green catalyst. And these will both go to the green player. Now we avoided most of our problems. We did get one six, but we also have two specificity chromosomes, which means we can re-roll two dice. So I can re-roll this six, and it is a four, which means it is not a five or a six, so we don't have any damage or any atrophy that's going to happen to our organism. This turned out to be a pretty darn good roll for our first Darwin roll with seven dice and no protection on our heredity chromosomes. Perfect. Our photocarboxylation survived quite well against its Darwin roll and our green player gained two additional catalysts. We made it past our Darwin roll, and now we can go into the purchase phase. And this time, each of our players has a biont in this organism. We're starting with the blue player. 
The blue player does not have a chance to attach because there are no mutations. Now we move over to the red player who can buy something for this organism even though it's not in their tableau. But they do have a biont in there so they can purchase for it. But the cost of the purchase will come out of the tableau of the player that the organism is in. Since photocarboxylation is in the green player's tableau, red can make purchases for it, but they have to use the green player's enzymes to make that purchase. Now red player can make a purchase. We have three green enzymes. You can make a purchase from an active row and or your home row. Photocarboxylation comes from the cosmic row. So a purchase can be made in the cosmic row even though it's inactive. And from the ocean because it is an active landform. And in the ocean we do have a blue mutation available that can help us because we don't have any hereditary or heredity chromosomes at this time. Normally you would purchase a mutation by paying one enzyme of the color. So if I want this blue one I would have to pay one blue enzyme. But I don't have any blue enzymes. Red is making this purchase from Green's Tableau and I have three, red, uh, three green enzymes. But you can do what's called chemoselectivity, which means you can take two enzymes of the same color, no matter what color they are, to equal an enzyme of a different color. So I'll spend, red will spend two green enzymes to equal a blue and purchase tRNA. And you can see tRNA causes methane pollution or an O2 spike. And that means when this mutation gets attached to the organism that is in the cosmic landform row, this O2 spike would affect every organism that is also in that row. At this time, there are no organisms out other than photocarboxylation in the green player's tab below, so this oxygen spike is going to affect nothing at this time. And this mutation also has the HGT ability. I'm going to move this over so it's easier to see and we'll make some space if these landforms become active. But we'll take our mutation and one blue cube that will be placed on the mutation. Remember, red purchased this from Green's tableau for this organism because red has a biont in it. Now the HGT ability allows you to reassign biomes in a microorganism. That's the only way to move biomes out of a microorganism to another microorganism or to another active row. And as long as you have a biont in an organism that has the HGT ability, you're allowed to do so. So even red can remove its biont along with green and reassign it to another organism or to an active refugium in an active row. But if at any time an organism is without any biomes, the organism dies and becomes extinct. So you can't actually cause an organism to commit suicide if you remove the biomes from it in this manner. Red has finished making its purchase and any purchases or promotions that occur and a promotion is when you spend another of the unpromoted mutations color so I mean if I were to spend another blue 
then I could flip this card over to its promoted side as, as a purchase also. But any abilities that are acquired by purchasing a mutation or promoting a mutation do not come into effect until the following turn. So I could not use this HGT ability in this turn. I would have to wait until the next turn to be able to do so. Green can make a purchase because it has a biont in photocarboxylation. There is a green mutation that is over here. It also causes an O2 spike, but again, there are no other organisms that are in the cosmic landform refugia right now, so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to spend my final enzyme, which will come out of the green player's tableau because it's his organism. And we're going to pick up this mutation, which is a chloroplast symbiont. And you can see that it does cause the O2 spike we don't have to worry about right now. And it also comes with one O2 shield additional and this green cube. So now there are two mutations over there. And now we have an additional O2 shield and we have three entropy chromosomes, but we don't have four biomes to assign out, so we're at our limit anyway with that. And that's going to put us at two green cubes, two yellow, and one blue on this organism. And let me show you why that's important. These are the macroorganism cards. And if you look on the bottom left, you'll see these cubes of multiple colors. Those will allow you to purchase one of these macroorganisms from your microorganism but you can only use cubes. These bionts do not count. Right now we have two yellow, two green, and a blue. That is not enough or in the right order to purchase any, but we do have two yellow, a green, and a blue, so if we had one more red chromosome we could purchase the lamp shells or we got two green, two yellow, and a blue, two more red, and we could break out the Apabinia. 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 I'm going to go with that. But again, you can only use cubes, and you need cubes in the color as indicated by the card, and it costs one enzyme to purchase the macroorganism. So not only do you have to have the cubes, you better have an enzyme available also. Green has finished its purchase, which would take us over to yellow to make a purchase, but yellow is not attached to an organism, therefore it will not make a purchase. This was a nice eventful round. We were able to create an organism, we were able to buy a couple of mutations for it. We're only one mana cube, one mutation away from possibly converting into a macro organism. A lot happened that round. That was a very productive 200 million years. So we're 600 million years in and we're starting to see some life in the cosmic area. Photocarboxylation is on its way to becoming a macroorganism. <laughs>